Hi, today I want to go over geometry modes in Fast64 in detail and show you what all these options do and how you should be using them. To start with, a geometry mode is basically an option for what calculations the RSP should do when it loads vertices. A vertex load is actually when all the vector math to calculate vertex properties occur, such as the lighting and spot on the screen they appear. So by using geometry modes, we can change which properties our vertices have as they're being drawn, and we can also save some performance by skipping calculation steps if we tune it correctly. First, I want to go over lighting and shading. Shading, in the way that N64 manuals refer to it, really just means any color associated with the vertex. The terminology here can be confusing because some people refer to a lot of different terms when they say the same words, but I want to make it clear that shade, the geo mode shade, right here, enables the colors on a vertex, which gets stored to the shade variable in the color combiner. If you don't have shade enabled, then your shade color is always black. So I don't have shade enabled. I click shade and I get solid black. It's always going to be black no matter what colors I try to put on here. It's not enabled. So if you don't use shade in the color combiner, you don't need to have shade enabled in the geo mode and you can save you save yourself some performance. So if we are shading, we have two options, smooth and flat shading. To use smooth shading, you need to have the smooth shading checkbox selected right here. You also need to actually smooth shade your mesh. Here I have two meshes, both with smooth shading, but this one that is not smooth shaded still looks flat shaded. And when I say not smooth shaded, I mean I didn't do it inside my bl blender model. And over here I have flat shaded uh, meshes in their geo mode. So this one is smoothed in blender it looks smooth, but it doesn't have smooth shading enabled. And if we go over to our in-game view, we can see the effect. See both of these are flat shaded because they don't have the smooth shading option selected. And over here, these are both smooth shaded selected in their geo mode, but only the one that's actually smooth shaded in Blender is smooth shaded. A smooth mesh generally uses less vertices than a flat shaded mesh. So if you want to flat shade something like here, I recommend you actually smooth shade it and then control it via this option here and you're going to use less vertices. The math on the N64 is all the same, it just does less of it. Next, we have lighting. Lighting enables the use of lights for the shade color. Lights are made up of two parts, the ambient and the diffuse, which is called light color in Fast64. Ambient is the base color, and diffuse is a color that is coming from a direction, aka the light source. Generally, ambient is a dark color and diffuse is a lighter color. The default direction of light is to the top right. You can see that top right is bright, bottom left is dark. If you don't use lighting, then the color that gets stored to shade is the vertex color. Vertex colors are a RGB value that can be stored to each individual vertex. It's a really convenient place to get color variety and a texture without having to use a complicated texture. On the sphere, I use vertex colors to add my own shading on the sphere. I put black on the bottom, some gray in the middle, and then the top is white. You can also use vertex colors to do alpha shading. Here in my sphere, I made this right half have vertex alpha which allows me to fine tune the alpha on my mesh without having to use a complicated texture or any UV mapping. You can also use vertex alpha while you have lighting enabled. Vertex alpha is always stored to shade color alpha regardless of whether you have lighting on or not. As far as performance goes, lighting is more costly than not having lighting. If you don't need to, then don't use lighting. You'll save performance. Next, I want to talk about 
texture coordinate generation. These are modes that generate texture coordinates instead of using the UV map of the mesh. These modes can be used for reflection mapping, environment mapping, and several other effects. Generated textures use the transform normals of your mesh as seen on screen to create a texture map. Basically, they look at the direction of the normal with respect to the screen and then use the XY coordinates of that normal to create the S and T coordinates of the texture. If we look at the sphere I have here with the normals exposed as blue lines, we could see this effect. If I look at it head on, you can see that the top of the texture right here has a Y normal of one and an X normal of zero pointing straight up. And the bottom of the texture right here is at the bottom with a Y normal of minus one and an X normal of zero. Minus one goes to zero on the texture and one goes to one on the texture. And then so zero is halfway of the texture. That's why the middle, which is a normal of zero, zero, is the middle. And then we can see that on the left and right. X minus one, zero. X of one, one. For the in-between lines, it gets mapped spherically. And if you know a bit about trig, you know that the projection values of vectors use the sine and cosine functions to get their value. So if you were to map the coordinates for the sphere along the x-axis, it would create a spherical map. On the right side where the x is pointing straight out, we have a value of one here. There is no x, a value of zero. And then in between here and here, we have the cosine function, which is going to create a spherical map. What is special about generated texture cords is that it follows the camera. If I change my view angle, the textures always look the same. And that's because there's always normals pointing up at the same spot respective to the texture on my screen. You can see that there's always a up line, there's always a down line. Uh, if I don't change the angle of my camera, but I move the physical location, you can start to see the other parts of the texture. Here we can see the sides uh, where the normals are pointing straight to the right i can see where the texture ends and get a picture of what the mapping looks like around the sphere so there's a few things to keep in mind with the uh, generated textures first is that it uses the vertex normal values to generate textures these are the same values to use to calculate lighting so the same rules apply for smoothness if i don't smooth my mesh then each face will have the same normal like if you see here and if each face has the same normal, then they all have the same texture coordinates because each line on all four corners of the face is the same. So it's all one texture coordinate. And we get these flat disco ball type looking textures when we do that. Another value to keep in mind with generated textures is texture scale. In order to have the texture fully take up the space on the screen, as in like we have it right here, the size of the texture go to all four corners of the space. We need to scale the texture appropriately. Fast64 auto scales, but we can manually change this. So if we increase the scale, we get more repeats. And if we decrease the scale, we get less. There's another version of texture gen called texture gen linear. To use this, you have to select both texture UV gen and texture UV gen linear. This works basically the same as texture gen, but instead of doing a spherical projection, it projects things more linearly, and that uses the inverse cosine function. I have a graph of that function right here, and you can basically see that it is mostly linear the majority of it and then it curves up at the edges so that it has a constant mapping in practice you basically only see the linear part hence the name texture gen linear we can see an example on this mapping on my sphere here when our sphere is halfway to the side we actually have just about exactly halfway through the texture you can see that this blue line here lines up with this blue line here which is half of the texture 
On the other hand, if you were to compare this to our spherical mapping, uh, this would be about 70% of the way through the texture for the same spot. And what this means is you can see the middle part here it takes up the majority of it. This is the first 50% of the texture and on our sphere that takes up the majority of our view. The biggest difference appears at the edges of the texture, which we can see here from our side view. This is because the diagonal of a texture is longer than one, but with linear coordinates, the furthest we can make it is one. So we're only going to show a circle of a radius one from the center of our texture if we do the mapping. So if we look at the texture view, we would see that we have a circle of radius one about that's going to show up on our mapping. Whereas on the linear, we're going to see all space of this texture. While you're using texture gen, you need to make sure you have lighting enabled. If you don't have lighting enabled, it's just going to use the UV map instead. Fast64 does not really do a preview of this, so I'll have to show you in game. So here I have a sphere with lighting disabled and no other changes, and it looks completely broken. That's because the texture scale is applied so that the mapping of the texture is so incredibly small we can't see anything on this plane i disabled the scale and just use a normal uv map and you can see that it appears completely normally so when you use texture gen and you don't have lighting enabled it just doesn't work the last thing i want to talk about is texture gen with scrolling textures this is a really neat effect and it can look really good if you set it up correctly here I have a large sphere with texture gen on it, and I am scrolling the texture. And here is the same sphere, but I use texture gen linear. Now what is left is a bit simpler. Z buffer allows the game to calculate the screen space Z value for your mesh, and we see the selection here. If you don't have this enabled, then the game defaults to zero which is the minimum Z, and it's always going to be drawn. You can see that in game. So I walk in front of the sphere and it's drawn over top of Mario. Compare that to this other sphere and I can walk in front of it cleanly. The next effect is culling. By default, backface culling is enabled, which means that the backside of the face is not drawn. There is an also an option for front face culling, which makes the front of the face not drawn. I have it on in the sphere, and you can't see it inside of Fast64, so we'll go to the in-game view. So here we have our sphere with front face culling, and you can see that the shading is noticeably different. And that's because all of the inside of it is going to be reflecting light at a much different angle than if it was the outside of the sphere. If I walk inside of the sphere, you can see that I can go right past the middle of it and I can still be seen. This is because the front half of the sphere isn't drawn, only the back half. Finally, the last geo mode to cover is fog. Fog is pretty complicated, but to use it in Fast64 is not that bad. What the fog geo mode does is calculate the fog value and place it in the fog variable, which is actually shade alpha. The fog calculation is done by comparing where the vertices are and the Z plane, which is how far away they are from the camera, and then compares that to the near and far values of your fog setup. So if you're less than the minimum value, you're zero. If you're at the max value, you get a fog of one. You can use fog independently of any of these other settings and it doesn't affect it at all. So just feel free to throw on fog whenever you want. To actually set up fog, you're going to want to select the fog preset, either shaded texture, cutout, or transparent. 
and then you want to set the fog variables in the F3D render settings. You're going to want to set the fog color and then the near and far value. You can also set normal fog per object if you uncheck the global fog value here. And then if you were to scroll in or out, you can see the fog being affected here. As I'm far away, it's black, and when I'm close, there is no fog. So, in order for fog to actually work, you need to be in two cycle mode. And you need to have fog shade in the first cycle of your render mode. This is all set up when you use the preset. Besides just using the preset, you can also use the fog variable in the color combiner. I have shade color alpha here as my fog variable and I'm changing between my texture which is this rainbow and solid white when I go far away it is not present that's because the fog is high and when I go close up it's white that's because there's almost no fog and so I default to the white color when I do this I turn off fog with getting rid of the render mode fog shade and I just use pass instead. It still shows up in FAS64 as having fog so if we go to the in-game view we can look at how these properly look. So here we go on the left I have fog shaded and on the right I have my fog variable interpolation. As I get closer I get less fog on the left and I get more white on the right. And when I'm right next to it, it's solid white. That's called this max fog. And when I'm very close to this, I get no fog at all. Well, that's all I got for Geo Modes. If you have any questions, leave a comment and be sure to check out my other Fan64 and SM64 hacking tutorials to learn more. Links in the description. Peace.